carving the maxillary canine. Step 1. Drawing and carving the labial surface. After making the block out of wax or so, we mark the labial surface and we draw the bisecting line which extends to the palatal surface. This is the labial surface of the canine, maxillary canine. The bisecting line bisects the tooth mesio distally. As you can see that the tip of the root extends distally to the bisecting line. The length of the crown is 10 millimeters and the length of the root is 17 millimeters. The width of the tooth at the cervical area mesia distally is 5.5 millimeters. The width of the crown at its widest area is 7.5 millimeters. The peak of curvature mesially is located between the incisal and the middle third of the crown. while the distal peak of curvature is located in the middle of the middle third of the crown. The mesial slope is shorter than the distal slope. Now it's time to carve after drawing the labial surface of the maxillary canine on the block, we should remove the, these areas by the use of a plaster knife. The dimensions that I'm using here are double the dimensions of the natural crown. If you're doing something the same size of the natural crown, you may need to use the lecron carver or the wax knife. Now we have to cut these areas by holding the wax knife parallel to the other surface. We have to check it every now and then and keep cutting until we get a surface which is parallel to the other side of the block. Now we do the other side, which is the distal side. This is the labial surface after it's finished. Step 2. Drawing and carving the mesial surface. This is the mesial aspect of the maxillary canine. The bisecting line will bisect 
the root at its tip while the incisal edge will be about one millimeter labial to this bisecting line. The buccal lingual dimension or buccal palatal dimension at the cervical area is 7 millimeters. Therefore, it is 3.5 millimeters from the bisecting line to the buccal point and 3.5 millimeters from the bisecting line to the palatal point. The buccal palatal width of the crown at its widest point is 8 millimeters. Therefore, it is 4 millimeters from the bisecting line to the peak of curvature buccally and 4 millimeters from the bisecting line to the peak of curvature palatally. The peak of curvature palatally is 3 millimeters below the highest point of the cervical line, which is about the middle of the cingulum, while the peak of curvature labially is also about 3 millimeters from the highest point of the cervical line buccally. The cingulum is about 6 millimeters in height then there's a concavity which is about 2.5 millimeters in height ending at the beginning of the incisal ridge which is about 1.5 millimeters The depth of the mesial cervical line is 2.5 millimeters. While the depth of the distal cervical line is 1.5 millimeters. Now it's time to carve. Now it's time to cut away these areas by the use of a plaster knife or a wax knife. I'll speed the playback so it won't take too much time. This is the final result, which is parallel walls, mesial and distal, buccal and palatal.